I know you guys enjoy my food hacks, but if you like breakfast food hacks, you're in the right spot. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, tips for all shades of mom life. And in today's video, I am back to share with you some more food hacks because it's Food Hack Friday. And today kind of kicks off a little bit of breakfast meal prep hacks that I'm gonna be bringing to you guys over the course of the next week or two. So I've been filming breakfast meal prep for weeks now that I'm planning on sharing with you guys. So this video I filmed a couple of weeks ago, but these are actual hacks that you guys will see coming out of Peggy Wang's food hack book. But later Later on in the week, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some mega breakfast meal prep. We're talking everything from breakfast burritos and breakfast sandwiches to Cinnabon breakfast sandwiches, so like a homemade McGriddle. I am just so excited to share all of this breakfast meal prep. I know for me, once I'm done doing all this, we're going to be set for like four to six weeks in the freezer with all sorts of breakfast stuff. And I love being set up like that. One day of focusing on this can set us up for so long. So if you guys are interested in that kind of video and you guys are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell so you guys are notified when I upload that. But for today, I have some really fun breakfast food hacks, like I said, from Peggy Wang's book, just to kind of kick us off. So we're gonna do two things inside of my waffle maker. Maker. And then we're also going to do something really fun with roasting fruit, which was really kind of different. So let me bring you down to my counter and let's talk some breakfast food hacks. All right, you guys. So here is our first recipe and I have out my waffle iron preheated and ready to go. And even though all these recipes are super simple, I think we're starting out with the easiest of all. So this says everything is more fun in a waffle form. Those indentations catch all of the good stuff you plan to put on top, which of course I have to agree with, especially with my family and being owners of a syrup business. We are all about syrup in this house and we take syrup very seriously so i absolutely love the way a waffle holds all of that delicious syrup especially when the whole chicken and waffles phenomena started like that is my perfect flavor that's savory and sweet i just really enjoy that and for this recipe all you're going to need is just two cans of regular biscuits and then some kind of cooking spray and i just have the coconut oil spray from trader joe's now this is literally as simple as it looks you guys so once that my waffle iron was preheated there's actually a waffle spot it says waffle it has all of your degrees along the knob and then it says waffle at the very end which is pretty much the hottest the iron will go so once it's preheated I just gave it a spray down with that cooking spray I popped open our biscuits and then I did just use my hands and kind of form them a little bit thinner and flatter just kind of pushing them out a little bit so that they would cover more of your waffle square once you go ahead and close the lid so my thought process was okay biscuits are good and anything that you put butter and syrup on is still going to taste delicious but how is this a waffle so even though it looks like a waffle I wasn't really getting the waffle vibe because they're not super sweet again with a little bit of butter and syrup anything is still delicious my kids are absolutely enjoying them they said they like the texture of them because they're super dense but all I could think about was how good this would be used as a vessel for some kind of breakfast sandwich with eggs and some kind of meat and cheese they did turn out a little thick to be a breakfast sandwich piece on each side but what they did do was peel apart and they peeled apart so perfectly that you easily could just use one of these to sandwich all of your eggs and your cheese and your meat and now this opened up doors for me which is why I absolutely love this food hack book because it really just in my mind I just can't 
get it to stop running about all the other things that I can do. So now while that is cooking up, we're gonna go over our next two recipes because they happen to be on the same page. So this is grapefruit brulee and it says, I am here to tell you right now that your morning grapefruit doesn't have to be cold, bitter, and lifeless. Prepare it that broiled way and you'll be shocked at how satisfyingly dessert-like it could be. And our next one is making hash browns in a waffle iron, which I've always wanted to do. And this says, it's a waffle made out of hash browns. Mind blown. You can put anything, anything on these like ketchup, sriracha, Tabasco, or whatever tickles your fancy. And so for our grapefruit brulee, we need a pink grapefruit, some honey, a little bit of salt, and some brown sugar. And then of course, for our shredded hash browns, we just need simply shredded hash browns and then a little bit of oil as I was chit chatting with you guys I realized all right I'm gonna burn my next set of waffle biscuits so let me take those out and then we set up the next batch and moved on to our grapefruit so all we're going to do is cut our grapefruit in half and you're going to expose it flesh side up on a oven safe pan. I'm actually just using a pizza pan because it was the first thing that was on top of when I opened up my cabinet. And so we're just going to start off by sprinkling a little bit of brown sugar on the top of each one. And then you're just going to follow it with adding a little bit of salt, which we learned in our last dessert and booze hacks that adding a little bit of salt to a fruit can help it bring out its sweetness which is perfect for a grapefruit because a grapefruit is a super tart and then you're just going to go ahead and drizzle a little bit of that honey and then you're going to stick it in the broiler so broiling it is going to heat up and kind of melt and that's why they say brulee because it's going to kind of brulee that honey and the brown sugar and make it like a sweetened crust on top of your pink grapefruit as it's cooking on the inside so i was actually super curious about this because back in the day my old trainer put me on the grapefruit diet and i remember absolutely hating and resenting eating a grapefruit every morning so i was so curious curious to see how this is going to turn out because grapefruits have so many good properties for you which is why a grapefruit diet is really really good for you so I was curious that went into the broiler and now our waffle biscuits were done and it was time to load up our hash browns so I have our hash browns here in a strainer because they want you to thaw them and then really squeeze out the water which is a good piece of advice you want them as dry as possible you guys and then inside of our waffle iron we're just going to go ahead and add a little bit of oil now it called for vegetable oil i was trying to be on the healthier side and so i did use olive oil it wants you to pour it in the bottom but then spread it on the top so i just used like a little basting brush and then went ahead and made sure that the top had a good coating and then the bottom was kind of filled but you'll see later that i ended up going back and adding a little bit more oil and i think part of that was not using vegetable oil vegetable oil gets a lot hotter than olive oil does and so it was going to do a better job i think of crisping it and i don't think i added enough because the book says it wants like a quarter inch of oil on the bottom of that waffle iron which kind of makes sense i was always wondering how a waffle iron was going to get Get it super crispy and i wanted to try this hack because i don't know about you guys but i burn them every time i mean i'm notorious for burning everything anyways because i'm always multitasking but i feel like you're supposed to put them in a pan and not touch them and I can never not touch them for as long as they need to be cooked they end up sticking to the bottom and I just never get a really good crispy shredded hash brown like you would get at the waffle house or something and so I really wanted to see if this was going to work now it says close the lid and then do not touch for 10 to 15 minutes so I closed the lid I let it go and I took out my broiled grapefruit and you can see it you can't see the sugar anymore you can't see the honey you can even see that it kind of 
caramelized and made like a burnt sticky stuff stuck to the pan. So we're going to address that grapefruit in just a second. But now here was our hash browns at that 10 and 15 minute marker. And you can see they're just not ready. First I checked on them at 10 minutes and then I came back back five minutes later and I was like, nope, they're still not the way that they're supposed to be. So I drizzled a little bit of olive oil onto the top of those hash browns and used that basting brush and just kind of brush them all over hoping to achieve that crispiness that I was really really looking for and I was like wow if I can nail these you can get so creative you can put onions in there like whatever kind of things your heart desires you can mix in there so I did give it another 10 minutes it took almost 25 minutes in here you guys but I mean don't get me wrong look at those hash browns it's one piece of hash brown and that is Waffle House style hash browns that's what I was looking for if you guys have ever eaten there you can dress up your hash browns however you want so you can do them loaded with cheese and onions and like the toppings are endless of what you can put inside of these hash browns and that's what i was trying to accomplish because i love those i just never can truly make them at home so I love the way that these came out. We absolutely loved them. And whatever we didn't eat that day, I actually ended up putting inside of some breakfast burritos. You know, a good shredded potato inside of a breakfast burrito is amazing. So that turned out delicious. And then here are our waffle biscuits. So like I mentioned to you guys before, these came out a little thick because they're the thick, like the grand styled biscuits. So I guess you could have used a different kind, but honestly, you guys all you really need to do is peel them apart and they work just so good as a sandwich heck throw some chicken up in there and do like a chicken and waffles kind of deal holy cow that would be so good all right here's our grapefruit and you can see that i took a little piece and i'm not gonna lie like heating it up definitely brings out a little bit of the sweetness but still not sweet enough no matter how much brown sugar and honey and even the salt trick on a grapefruit i swear it's just they're so bitter i got a flashback of my gym days and it just that was a not for me but as far as the hash browns are concerned and the waffle biscuits are concerned those were a huge thumbs up i absolutely love them i will definitely make them again and now those waffle biscuits have kind of piqued my interest so now i can't stop thinking about all the other things that i can do putting cinnabons in there and making that home made mcdonald's style mcgriddle i don't know i just feel like it is endless and that is what i love about the food hack book is that she just kind of opens my mind to all these other things that i can do sometimes their grapefruit fails but for the most part you guys i just can't I, everything she does i usually just fall in love with and the waffle iron was a big hit this time Okay, you guys, so that's it for this time's food hack video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Remember, if you guys are new here and you liked these kinds of breakfast hacks, stay tuned because I got tons more coming at you. Not to mention, you guys, I sat down and I mapped out my booze and dessert hacks book, and then this book, and I still have another year worth of sharing food hacks with you guys. So if you enjoy these, make sure to give me a big thumbs up so I know to keep sharing them. It lets YouTube know that I want to keep sharing these videos because I enjoy them. I have learned so much from these books and I wanna keep sharing it with you guys. So thank you again so much for watching. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.